What up, pleasure bags? Happy Wednesday and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. So some of you guys might be wondering why we're not doing Commander today. Uh, because we usually do Commander on Wednesdays. Uh, the reason is because I want to put it down for a bit. It's it's just been very slow having four people with rounds of priority on Moto. It just goes by so sluggishly. And uh, maybe we'll pick it up again when the next Commander set comes out or something and experience that new stuff. But for now, in place of it, I'm going to be doing some more Pioneer content because I really enjoy playing Pioneer. So on to today's video, we're going to be playing some Boros Lurus Companion Burn that user Tommy Cakes took to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO Pioneer League. Now you might be wondering what's so special about Boros Lurus Burn. It's everywhere, right? But it's everywhere in Modern. This is actually the first I'm seeing this deck in Pioneer. Now I could be living under a rock. But let's be real, we're all living under a rock right now. Literally, figuratively, literally speaking. Um, so yeah, the this deck is really cool and modern with, you know, Mishra's Bobble and uh, Seal of Fire that you can constantly get back with Luris. But in Pioneer, the one cool synergy I see with it, uh, not only can you get back your dead creatures, you have a lot of, like, especially, like, Eidolon and stuff, but Viachino Pyromancer is something that seems particularly cool with it. It's a piker, it dies easy, and when you get it back constantly with Luris, you can start shocking the opponent for two, 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 and you can just use it as a chump blocker, and so it, it's it's gonna be a really good late game plan, which Burn usually doesn't have. If the opponent has more than three life, um, then being in top deck in the late game is a little hard, but with Luris, it might be a little bit better. Um, so we're going to try it out and see how it does. So if you wanted to play today's deck along with us, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online. And if you wanted to pick up today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all my patrons scrolling down below. It is because of you guys that this channel is possible, so thank you very much for your support. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are here live on Twitch, and we got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. And today's deck tech is going to look a lot like deck techs that other YouTubers do, and I apologize about that. But, you know, I usually do the edited deck techs with the layouts and the graphics on screen and stuff, but I really, like, this month has been very busy for me, very hectic, so I really didn't have the time to do the kinds of deck techs I usually do, so I had to do it like this but let me know if I should keep it this way. Let me know what your opinion in the comments down below if you like the, the deck text I usually do or if you like them straight from MTGO like this because I personally kind of like this better. Not only is it less editing for me and I already got the deck ready to go on Magic Online anyways, um, but you can see the full list on screen. So if you get it, you can just skip right on to the gameplay. Um, but I will go over the deck tech um, so you guys can get a little showing of this deck like if you are new to Magic and don't know what it's all about. But yeah, let me know your comments down below. Let me know your opinion on what kinds of deck techs you like better. So this is a burn deck. The only It's like the Boros burn deck in um, Modern, but it's moved over to Pioneer. And so Lurus' synergy usually in Modern was with Seal of Fire for, you know, burning shenanigans. But in this deck, the only thing I see it for is a Viachino Pyromancer, which has that ETB effects deal 2 um, to the opponent or a Planeswalker they control, most likely their face. And then once that dies, or you chump block with it, or you relentlessly swing with it and let it die, Luris can get that back and start shocking stuff. Um, so other things you can get back, you have other creatures. Eidolon of the Great Rebel punishes the opponent whenever they cast a spell with CMC 3 or less. Affects us as well, but it's more important to affect our opponent. Now, mono red decks in Pioneer, or red deck wins, usually run Monastery, Swiss Spear, and Soul Scar Mage as our one-drop prowess, guys. And this guy also has the ability to have Wither on your burn spells, which is great. Um, but another one drop we're adding into here is Gitu Lava Runner, uh, because this deck is a lot more spell heavy than red deck wins. There's a lot of spells and Gitu Lava Runner gets pumped and gets haste if you have two or more instant sorcery cards in your graveyard, which is very likely. It's a burn deck, so we got lots of burn spells. Uh, we got one single shock and a play set of wild slash is our one drop, um, burn spells. Wizard's Lightning can also be a one-drop burn spell, deal three damage to any target, like a Lightning Bolt, except um, it only costs one mana if you control a wizard. Our wizards are Gitu Lava Runner, Soul Scar Mage, and Viachino Pyromancer. So we have quite a few things to proc it, which is pretty nice. And then we have more burn spells at our two-drop slot in a Lightning Strike, solid two mana for three damage, and then Boros Charm, two mana for four damage to the face. And then we're just using all these spells to get prowess triggers 
And, you know, once these guys die, we can get them back with Luris. And then at our three drop slot, which can also be one mana, we got Light of the Stage, has Spectacles. So you can cast it for one mana if you dealt damage to an opponent this turn. And then you get to exile top cards, of your, the top two cards of your library and cast them um, until the end of your next turn. So you can even get a chance to untap with all your mana and then cast the free burn spells and free creatures you got off the top. Get your hasty little build your own goblin guides. Uh, I believe we have a total of 19 lands. Uh, we have 12 total white lands because Luris needs white mana. So let's go on to the sideboard. We got Chain to the Rocks, which is one mana you enchant a mountain and exile tire creature. This is to bring in against the fat creatures that your burn spells can't deal with. Although it's really easy to deal with burn spells if you have a soul scar or to deal with fat creatures if you have a soul scar mage in the battlefield, giving your burn spells wither and shrinking those fat creatures so that your prowess dudes will be bigger than them. But however, if there is an abundance of big creatures, you got Chain to the Rocks for that. Skullcrack is there to prevent the opponents from gaining life because they can't gain life this turn. They take three damage instead. Um, Ash Zealot, it punishes the opponent for casting spells from their graveyard, so that's really good against Underworld Breach. So basically what I'm trying to say, it's good against the Lotus Breach deck, um, because they want to, like, cast all their spells from their graveyard to combo off. So Ash Zealot stops that, um, in addition to Eidolon stopping that. So you have a lot of ways to beat Lotus Breach. And then, uh, Searing Blood can kill a small creature while also continuing to be aggressive because it deals three damage to their face as well. So good against the aggro v aggro matchups. Luris, of course, in the companion slot, and then two copies of Deflecting Palm to bring in against the fatty decks along with Chain of the Rocks. So if a fat creature like a Galta or, I don't know, something huge, like, wants to hit your face, you just deflect that damage straight back to them. It can deal upwards of 5 to 12 damage, so it's it's pretty clutch against that kind of thing. So I guess that is about it for Boros Lura's Burn, and let's go on to round number one. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against and Mac 66 and we won the die roll. We're going to be in the play with some Boros Luris Burn. This is hecka sketchy. Super hecka sketchy. Um, I think it's going to have to be a mole. I don't think five lands is going to do it. That's much better. Um, I like the Eidolon Swiss Spear and the Shock. I think I'll throw away the Lightning Strike. I actually like light up the stage here. Helps me hit my land. No companion from our opponent. I'm so surprised because every single list I ever see 5-0 leagues are companion decks. They're Luris or Yarion, and a lot of the decks we fought today haven't been either. We did fight a Yorion and a Luris, I think, but not every single round. Which I am surprised about. Temple of Enlightenment scares me because I know it's going to be blue white control. Blue white annoying tribal. <laughs> Just mono sweepers and counter spells. And absorb is going to be very obnoxious. It was a cat once, but then it mutated. It turned into the cat, it turned into Vadrock. All right, let's go to combat. I am guessing an Azorius Charm is gonna come out here. Seal away. On what? On the Eidolon, sure. Wild Slash you. Shock you. Hit the prowess. Get him for three, down to nine. Light up the stage with spectacle. Our last card better be good. Not be dubs lands. Because usually when we're looking for lands, we never get them. And then when we don't need lands, we get them up. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? And magic, how could you? Now proceed to get everything absorbed.
All right, Luris time. And then you know what it is after Luris time? Soul Scarmage time? It is Supreme Verdict time. And you know what it is after Supreme Verdict time? It is Scoop time. Stephanie Clarion? Okay, there's hope. If I get like a Boros Charm, I get them to one here, so that's cool. And good thing it wasn't a War Leader's Helix, which War Leader's Helix is a card I feel people should play more often despite it being a four drop. Don't you dare have another another detention sphere. Two lands off the top, look at the bright side. Yeah, but I'd rather them have been burn spells. Oh, you sure you want to do that, opponent? Are you sure you want to give me extra cards? This is lethal as is. Gonna have to have an unsummon here. I didn't need to tap so much mana. Fevered Visions is not good against Burn. It is actually good for them, so yeah. Um, Well... Against blue white or just guy fevered visions, I probably want nothing. So let's run it right back. This is fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, I mean maybe I could do without like a shock and like plus ash zealot. Maybe I could go up some ash zealots, but I don't know. Let's just run it right back as is. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what you say. That's one of the uh, Magic player's biggest problems is they think, oh, like this was awesome, but it can be better. I want to try new things. And, like, nope. Don't do it. It's fine how it is. Um, This hand is looks kind of weak. I play a Lava Runner, it just gets burnt. I'm doing nothing. I think let's mulligan. That's okay. Let's keep that. I think I want to throw away one of my lands. I almost pressed mulligan again. Throw away Battlefield Frog. I probably should have kept that since our life total isn't very relevant here. And I do need double white for Luris, so I probably should have kept that. That Battlefield Frog. Ooh, that's a good top deck. Same curve out as last time. Rogrin Trium. I like that one. I wish I could see this card more. It's really pretty. John Bots into a seal away. Of course. Ooh, I got the land I wanted. Get out Eidolon. I'm expecting them to play Teferi and bounce it. Can this deal damage to a Planeswalker? It can. That's great. Dude, that is fine by me. Yes. Give me those cards. All right, Vyashino Pyromancer. Wild Slash you so that I don't get a trigger off of uh, Fevered Visions. to your face go to combat swing for two down to nine give me that free card if i need to gain some life back i just play luris well that's another pyromancer my brothers these are my these are my two boyfriends i have them on either side of me wherever i go in the magic world they're right there my pyromancer boys Sure, that's fine. Deals with Eidolon. Ooh, I think this is lethal. Yeah, this is lethal. 
Yoshino Pyroman. Two to you. Lightning Strike you. And get in for two. That's exact C7. That's all she wrote. Sweet. Taking down Jess Guy. Fevered Visions. GG and Max C. We went up against Fevered Visions before. It's like, it really helps out Burn. It really does. I think you should just sideboard it out, even though it's your main plan. Got a game here against Lifestream, and we won the die roll. Going to be on the play here with some Boros, Luris, Burn, and Pioneer. That's going to be a mulligan because we got no lands. That is going to be a keep because we got double Light of the Stage to help find lands. Um, I think Eidolon might be a little too slow here. Right? Maybe not. I think I might throw away one of my Light of the Stages because I think I'm only going to need the one to get the second land. Are we on the play? I don't remember. Yes, we are on the play. All right, I think I'll throw up light up the stage number two. They don't have a companion, so we don't have any idea what they're on. And getting out of turn two Eidolon would be amazing here if I did hit my land naturally. Oh, Yavimaya Toast, is this Lotus Field? Looks like it is. So now I don't even get to trigger um, Spectacle anyways. Ooh, Socketed Foundry. This is pretty good. I'm going to bluff here and swing, which they're probably blocking. But Eidolon is pretty good here. And if I pain myself too much, I can just play Luris. It's just icing on the cake that Luris is lifelink. So good. Sylvan Scrying. I have to take two off of that. They're going to need to deal with Eidolon before they combo off. Their Lotus Field's here. Um, let's go with uh, Swifty. We take some pain. Get in there around them. And then we'll just light at the stage, hit our third land. Maybe we'll hit a wizard. All right, give me a land and a wizard. Land and a wizard, please. Those are just two burn spells. I like burn spells. Burn spells are good. But I need mana. <laughs> hey, Kioski. Got here late as always. Um. All right. Well, we know what I'm. I know what I'm doing here. Lightning strike them. I honestly should have lightning strike the arboreal grazer. <laughs> but this is fine too. What if they just untap and questing beast us? That'd be hilarious. All right, they're down to three, so I just untap and wizard's lightning them for lethal. Let's see. They can't even cast two spells here. It has to be pour over the pages. Pour over the pahes. How's your day been? Played a lot of arena. Sweet. Fun to chill. And the opponent reaches himself out of the game. Alright, let's go into the sideboard. Um I probably want Ash Zealot. And that's it. So cut a sh light of the stage. Cut a couple light up the stages. A lightning strike, I think. Yeah. 
Ashzelt's gonna be clutch here. This is our Lotus Field hate. Because it says that whenever somebody casts a spell from their graveyard, Ashzel it deals two damage to them or three damage to them or something like that. It feels so weird though that there's no Scab Clan Berserker in the sideboard. Okay, it's got an Ash Zealot. I'll keep it. Very red mana heavy, so I can't play Luris, but I don't think I need to play Luris this game. Ooh. They mulligan down to six, it appears. It's good for me. You really enjoy drafting? Arena is quite okay to do it. Yeah, I like that. Um, I don't know. I've, I've heard that they're going to update Arena so that you draft against humans instead of against a, a system. But I really like... Um, I really like drafting against bots because it's goes, it goes by so quick. And having quick drafts is always good. Like, I want the next pack immediately after I finish my pack. And on Moto, you gotta wait for everybody at the table to be done. Because you zone draft. You gotta zone draft. Um, you know, I kind of want to get that dang Arboreal or Grazer out of the way. I don't think they can win on turn three. So I think I'm just going to Lightning Strike this and get in for two. It feels very bad and awkward, but... That thing will save them a bunch of damage over the course of the game, so might as well get it out of the way now. I gotta get out this Ash Zealot as quick as possible, though, which arguably I should have got it out right there. But, um, yeah, they because they have a chance to breach and win here if they had the nuts, but I don't think they can. So we have a turn. They did it already? Oh, no. Korea drafts are against humans. It's really boring to wait for other picks. Yeah, like... It sucks to wait for other people. I want to just draft quickly. And then there's some people at the table like, oh, it's my first draft. I have to read all the cards. All right, well, now we got this. The Ash Zealot. Ash Zealot. So now, no breach for you. I wish I had Fnatic Amogus right now. Copies their Lotus Field. Plays a Temple of um, Mystery. This is one of my favorite Arts of Magic. It's just so satisfying to look at. I like that way better than the promo. I wish I had... I think I have one of these in foil in one of my Commander decks. Alright, Viashino Pyro. Hit you for two. Wild Slash you. Wild in the streets. Run in, run in, wild in the streets. Getting there, four, six, down to four. All right, opponent, reach all you want. I think we got him by the balls here. Zero the tumbling sands. All right, I think I'm F6'd. Bot drafts are faster, but once you know what archetypes the bots usually pick, it's easy to pick good decks. But I think also, don't they just take random stuff sometimes so you kind of get cut off whatever you do? So it's like kind of sucky. That big game. Taking down Lotus Breach very convincingly, super quick. All they had was a Void Snare. See, I see this deck 5 of the legs all the time, but it's got problems. Ain't nothing the Boros Lurus Burn can't fix. Got a game here against Mall Cop 007. We were just talking about 007. We won the die roll. We're going to be on the play with some Boros Luris Burn. Um, on the play, I don't know if I like this. It's a little mana light, but I do have things to do. All I need is one more land. These hands have worked out before. I'm going to try it. I need one more land here. Because the only time I'd keep one land hands is if I actually have something to do with that one mana in the meanwhile. And I do have three things, four things to do, five things actually to do. That's getting wild slashed. I 
didn't hit my land, but we're okay for now. Like, Mono Green Stompy is going to be very hard to break through. Though. We're going to get destroyed in a moment. Just you wait. I'm not going to waste my Wizard's Lightning on that. Let's just get out Swifty. Right down to 16. And here comes something thick. Probably a uh, questing beast or something like that. Steel Life Champion's pretty thick. All right. Um, go to combat. Swing in with both. Yo, what's up, Toilet Doc? They're gonna block there. All right, let's just Wizards Lightning it, shrink it down, and kill it. How are you doing today, Twelve? No wizards let okay i'm gonna scoop to that i am gonna scoop to that they have the blossoming defense and completely two for one me all right deflecting palm get in here immediately fearing blood get in here because you can kill mana darks and heart's desires tokens and chain of the rocks get in here immediately on the draw cut eidolon and on the draw, cut light of the stage. And then just cut one Gitu Lava Runner. When in practice, how many times must you face the same opponent? Um, I don't I don't ever fight the same opponent in the same day with the same deck. I, I always get diverse matchups for the video. You're okay today, just exhausted. It's been an exhausting and sad morning and my heart's dropped, but I'm trying to I'm trying to keep my composure on stream and not cry. I'll be real here. I'm doing a good job at it so far. And Boros, Lurus, Burn has helped me get my mind off things. Got another mana dork? Nothing. Alright. Get in there for one, and then we'll follow up with Viachino. It's just all the Zavi stuff, Twelfth Doc. I'm not. I'm not gonna bring it up anymore. Like, I'll try. I'm trying to avoid the topic. Sir Fed and the Hammer Hand, the Hedge Hammer. Sure. Ooh, all right. That's good. Talk that boy. I can get an extra prowess trigger here, but let's just make use of the mana and go for Boros Charm. In there for five, bring him down to eight. Now I have five points of burn, so they're at a virtual three. Thanks, twelfth. Ooh, that's just eight damage straight to the dome. You're dead. God draw. <laughs> the nut draw. Let me give a generous shout out for my boy Twelfth. Also, give you a hug. You were last playing OOT? Of course you were. So I was doing the, uh, remember I was doing the other day, the, um, the rando race with Jinda. Um, and I was saying the ultimate race would be Jinda, Wealth, Savage, and um, who else? Who, who do you think is a really good one? I haven't raced with Benji, so I don't know. Um, who, who's, who would be the fourth? Who would be the best? The fourth doc. But I, I, I like Rando. It's really fun. I want to, I want to do another one sometime. Maybe, uh, next Thursday if anybody's down for one. Like, but I want to hit a Benji for a Kaizo race, dude. It's been a while since I've played some Kaizo, but it's it's really fun. Um 
what do we bottom here? Probably a... Oh, no, not a Wild Slash, because they're probably going to have an Elf on the first turn. Might have to be a Deflecting Palm. I like Deflecting Palm, but... We don't know how good their hand's going to be. All right, Wild Slash that immediately. Always bolt the birds. Or slash the elves if you're talking about Pioneer. You think Sal would be good? Yeah, Sal's pretty good, but I haven't seen him do a lot of OOT random. I see him do a little bit here and there, but like, I haven't seen him do a ton. Because he does more like echoes, and I guess he does a bit of OOT. Like, I'm pretty sure Sal could be a good fourth. Um, I think I am going to two for one myself to kill that Yorvo. That Yorvo's thick and scary. Just like your mom. Okay, they're actually taking it. I'm going to wild slash them rather than play Gitu Lava Runner here. Or uh, Wizards Lightning them here. Because Gitu Lava Runner now is haste anyway, so it doesn't matter if I play him here. Alright, I got seven points of burn in hand, so they're kind of at four. So this is good. Questing Beast. Sorok the Hun Caller. Oh boy, we're dead in two swings. This is why I should have kept the Deflecting Palm, guys. Don't do what I do. I really wanted to keep it. Now, as soon as I bottomed it, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Because this is going to happen. All right, well, I can go with... Oh, wait, I have lethal here. I just swing and I borrow Charm and Wizard's Lightning and they're dead, right? That's seven damage for them to four. Yeah, that's lethal. All right, well, that was cool. I mean, I guess they're YOLOing it. They were YOLOing it, but didn't pay off. I guess I would have done what they did and just try to go for it like that. All right, taking down Monogreen Stompy. Pretty sweet. It's a little bit of a scary matchup, you know, because they can hit us back just as hard as we hit them, but it's all down who has the nuts in their hand. And I think this time we had the nuts all up in our grip. Got a game here against Richman95, and we won the die roll. We are going to be on the play here with some Boros Luris Burn. This is very, very questionable. That's a lot of bolts, but it's very slow without a wizard. I have a turn to top deck a wizard. Like, if I top deck a Vyashino Pyromancer, suddenly this is explosive as heck. This is mega awkward, but I'm going to keep it. Because I have faith that I'll draw my brother Vyashino. Temple Garden. Shock. Okay, that helps. Them shocking helps. What are you doing with the shock here? Is this like one mana create a token like Heart's Desire? But Heart's Desire is a sorcery. Maybe they accidentally shocked. I don't know. That was weird. Oh, maybe they they had a Spectral Sailor because they're banned spirits and they... um. Maybe they're banned spirits. Let's let's play Luris here. Because maybe they had Spectral Sailor and they accidentally played the wrong played in shock the wrong land, realized, wait, that's not blue, and they couldn't play their Spectral Sailor. Yep, rattle chains. I knew it. I knew it. So our sideboard um full crap our Searing Bloods are going to be great here. Thank goodness for Searing Blood. Savior of Burn. Such a great card. Alright, dude. It's your turn. You can go. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Now I know they're holding up Spell Queller. I have a good feeling that they're going to flash in Nabblegast Herald. There's no way they're letting me get in with this Lurus. Something's happening to this Lurus, I can tell you that much. Okay, never mind. Just petty theft it. All right, sure. Okay, how much burn is this, dude? Whoa. I can double Boros char charm them down to 10. I can, if I draw a land, Wizard's Lightning plus Lightning Strike, Wizard's Lightning plus Lightning Strike. That's a lot of damage. Um, that is a lot of damage. I really need to top a Wizard, like really bad. I need to top deck a Wizard quick. Um, I don't think I go on the burn plan here. I think I just replay Luris because I need to get a hit with this Life Link. Um, yeah, I need to get a hit with this life link. I... If only Luris was a cat wizard. Cat nightmare. Not even a necromancer because he brings stuff back from the dead. Well, they're shocking again. That's good. But they're holding up, uh, they're holding up, uh, Coco for sure. I hope they Coco when they go to blocks, because I want to just gain three life here. I did hit my next land, which is great. Marceline91, thank you so much for the tier four subscription for four months in a row. Welcome back to the marination. Enjoy the emotes yet again. Good to have you. How are you doing today? All right, that thing I will... I'm not going to lightning strike it. I'll see what else they're going to flash in. All right. In response to that one, I will lightning strike this one. All right. Do I light? Do I wizards lightning that? I think the answer is yes. Do not let their creatures have a chance to get out of burn range. I don't want them to untap with all that mana and have even more lords to flash it in response. So kill it while I can. What is your opinion on companion as an ability? It was a mistake. Easy as that. It was an absolute mistake. It's too OP. At least Lurus and Yorion are. The rest are fine. A Bosch is pretty crazy too, but fine. I don't have any problems with a Bosch. All right, I don't mind if they want to trade with anything here. Um, I think this is fine. I, I think, um, let me see, what do I do here? What do I do here? Okay, I'm gonna let this go. I could Boros Charm to give Indestructible. But then what they're gonna do is they're just going to sack in response. If I let this go, I Boros Charm plus Wizard's Lightning, untap Boros Charm plus Wizard's Lightning, how much damage is that? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is enough. But they could have another, they could have another, um, you know what? I'm going to Boros Charm them right now. And then I'm going to light up the stage. My hair's getting in my mouth. Ooh, Viashino Pyromancer, my brother. And that's a wizard, too. These are both wizards. So I'm going to be able to cast one mana wizard's lightnings next turn. 
Next turn is going to be explosive. Very, very explosive. They're at seven. I'm going to be able to go Gitu and then Boros Charm, double Wizards Lightning next turn. Nothing they can do about it. I mean, even if they spell quell one of those, we still have it. They shocked. They need that mana. This makes it easier for me, though. I'm gonna... Oh, they just went to sideboard. Wow, they didn't even... You don't even know what I got. Are they in the... Are you in the chat, rich man? Did you know what I had? No, rich man's not in the chat. Why would they scoop there? They don't know what I have. All right, well, against spirits, we want searing bloods. We want chain to the rocks. The Flecting Palm is fine, but not insane. Um, bring in those. Let's cut the Eidolons on the draw. Too dangerous. Some of the filler led at the stages. I want to keep creatures here because it kind of sometimes forces them to stay back. And that means we have more time to survive. If people enjoy companions, they already have a format for that. Commander. Um, yeah. But now Commander has two generals. Because that's fair magic. <laughs> Why force that into every format? I don't know. Just everybody loves Commander. Commander is, is the most played format. So I feel like Wizards is like, people love Commander. Let's just make something that will bring the commander aspect to every format so that we can get commander players to try new formats. I feel like that's what they, they were going for, but it ended up being broken. <laughs> um, This hand has a lot of removal, but it's cheap removal like this. But I'm going to keep it because I can remove so many early game things. I just got to draw one single land and I'm fine. Okay, that's obviously a Spectral Sailor. And I did get my land, that's good. But that's not mana that can help pay for Lurus. Lurus needs double white. And it also made it way more broken that the commander, that the companions are um, hybrids. They're, they're so flexible because they can go into any plethora of decks because they're multicolored. Um, if they were monocolored, though, then they would be a lot more narrow. So that's the problem with them. All right, um, let's go with... I'm going to go Lightning Strike here. The reason being is that I can give Gitu Lava Runner haste next turn by casting Wizard's Lightning plus Gitu Lava Runner, and I can make use of that hasty ability and just make use of the mana now. Wouldn't, um, wouldn't mono mean they'd be able to go into more decks since they're restricted by your commander's color? The color, the color identity doesn't apply to companions. Uh, that looks like a spell queller to me. All right, I'm gonna attempt to shock the um, spectral sailor here, and hopefully they spell quell it and I get a chain reaction. But I'm hoping they just let this go and then I play Gitu Lava Runner with haste. Rattle Chains, don't be a Rattle Chains. Be a Spell Queller. Please be a Spell Queller. Green, white, blue. Okay, perfect, perfect. This is amazing. This is amazing. I don't think people should ever Spell Quell removal in a position like this, because then this happens. You get Chain Reaction. And now I get this back anyways. I get another extra Prowess Trigger, courtesy of Spell Queller. And, um... Yeah, I get in there for four, and you have no board. And I have double Goblin Guide next turn. But double Goblin Guide can likely get eaten by a Coco. If they Coco into, like, double Empyrean Eagle, then I'm screwed. So they can still definitely rebuild at this point. 
Hybrid mana is mono mana. It's multicolored. You can play two different colors with hybrid mana. And I'm not getting any white mana for Lurus, but let's just go double Lava Runner. And they didn't get their fourth land, so I don't have to worry about Coco. And I don't have to worry about Queller either, because Soulscar Mage can shrink. Get in there. All right, well, Wild Slash the Queller, put some minus counters on it for the Soul Scar Mage's ability. Get my dude back. How rude of you to take it from me. And they're at 10. They're at a virtual 8 because of my Wild Slash. With 6 power on board. Imperial Eagle, sure. Ooh, baby. Oh baby. Um Okay, they block something like a Gucci Lava Runner. I lightning strike wild slash. Yeah, that's that's lethal. They're forced to block Soulscar Mage here. I could have killed their Imperian Eagle first, but I'd only get them to one if I did that. But this way is lethal if they don't block Soulscar. Yep, that's lethal. Lightning Strike. Wild Slash, Xaxi's perfect, perfect hand, everything we needed. They're probably salty. <laughs> They're probably a cracker, a saltine cracker right now. Just oozing salt into your taste buds. I can taste the salt. Ugh. Taking down Band Spirits, in my opinion, the best deck in both Modern and Pioneer. But the burn can cheese out everything. It's never wrong to go with Burn if you're looking for an easy, simple deck to get easy wins with. That's why Mono Red's the most popular format in every, any given uh, format, except the Legacy and Vintage, obviously. Got a game here against Beave 3, and we're going to be on the draw here with some Boros Lurus Burn. This seems pretty good. It gets out the gates pretty quickly. Oh no, it's a mirror. Except it's uh, their traditional Abosh. Right? Oh, they don't have Abosh. What is this? I don't know what we're going up against. Oops, I played the wrong land. Okay, but I got a shock. So that was two unnecessary damage there. So if we end up dying by two points of damage, I will know the culprit. <laughs> You're always down for another multi-co-op session? Oh yeah, we should actually um, get back into that, that Discord chat and see if, see if the guys want to wanna do that. Oh, it's goblins. Ooh, interesting. Go out alarm. Although this Eidolon's probably going to hurt us more than it hurts them. Um, you know what? I'm going to swing with the Eidolon and play a second Eidolon, I think. They're going to have to kill him eventually. Um, maybe I do light up the I'm gonna light up the stage here. It's painful. But I'll eventually get out Luris. I'll eventually get out Luris, and then Luris can just gain the life back. Another Legion Loyalist. All right, they're taking that damage. Paying the price. Down to 14. Any swings? No swings. All right, I play that Inspiring Vantage for free. Um, Go to combat, attack with both of the Eidolons. I think I'm going to play Lurus here, not just ignore that Boros Charm. Uh, all right, they're gonna block. They're gonna double block. That is fine. Exactly what I wanted. So now, in that case, I think I'm gonna cast the Boros Charm. 
And then I'll just Wizards Lightning, Wizards Lightning them, and then I'll untap and cast Double Lightning Strike, and they're dead. All right, opponent, go for it. And they should have Lurus as their companion, too. Goblin Rabble Master, that is fine. All right, well, might as well block this. You never know what could happen. All right, Wizards Lightning their face. Down to one. I'm gonna win with Mr. Viashino again. Gotta win with my homie, my hubby, my fam, the dino lizard boys. All right, against goblins. I definitely want searing bloods. And uh, Eidolons are, or Ash Zelts are not bad. They're good blockers. Two, two first strikes. I could see running those. Um, Deflecting Palm is great against the Goblin guy, or not the Goblin guy, the Goblin Rabble Master. Um, I definitely don't want Eidolons in this matchup, despite how well they work there. I only want them on the play. I don't mind Ash Zealot. I don't mind Chain to the Rocks. Um, I think I'll go Ash Zealot. It's a fine blocker. Maybe I just want all the Ash Zealots over, like, Boros Charms, because Boros Charms don't have the capabilities of killing creatures, and I think that being able to have that versatility to hit a creature is definitely worth it, or interact with the creature in some sort of way. So I think I'm going to cut a couple Boros Charms for Ash Zealots, because they actually have a way to interact with creatures. This is not a matchup where we're trying to go super mega fast unless we're on the play. This, this is likely going to be a stabilization attempt there on the play. So this hand is okay. It has one removal spell that is capable of killing a rabble. I'm kind of scared of like a chain whirler, but I do. And I have not hit a red-white land at all in this matchup, I don't think. Oh, wait. Never mind. I got one in the last game. I accidentally shocked, I remember. Ooh, there's a white land. It's chaos, but it works. I forget what that song is, but it's by Grizzly Bear. Good song. I think it's called like Four Clovers or something. Ooh, that means I can play Lurus next turn. All right, stay defensive, play Viashino, and let Viashino die because I can get him back with Lurus and I want to because he deals damage. I'm surprised. I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised that they actually, you know, didn't do any. I'm gonna get in here actually. I'm actually kind of surprised that they, like, didn't do anything in the second turn. They're an aggro deck. That that tells me they're very three drop heavy though right now. So I'm expecting a, a rabble. Legion war boss doesn't force the legion loyalist to attack, but I'm definitely hundred percent wild slashing that. Let's take it for now. All right, let's uh, wild slash the war boss. Play another lava runner. Let's get him with both. I kind of feel like we're racing now. If they want to rabble and force to swing with everything, then I get to block their loyalist for free value. Oh, what is this? Oh, baby. What is happening? Oh, I'm terrified. Is it... What can it be? Just like Agent of Treachery? Angrav's Marauders. Oh, man. Well... Block Legion Loyalist and trade with it. Oh man. Angrath's Marauders is a problem. <laughs> I 
Well, play Luris. Replay the Gitu Lava Runner. No swings. We're going to need a block here. They only have one thing to trigger why no to this turn, though. I regret not blocking my Viachino on the Goblin. I was going to. This felt incorrect. Of course, they have a Wild Slash off the top for Luris. And come on, no more hasty boys. And Mana Braid. A nice one two punch to have there. Oh, yeah, I'm scooping. 100%. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, so we figured out what it is. Um. I probably want Chain of the Rocks now, don't I? But we're on the play now. We're on the play. Okay, if they have their, their damage doubled up with Ingrass Marauders and I Deflecting Palmet, is it going to deal double da damage back to them? Like, it's going to deal 8 back to them if they hit me with the Marauders? I think I can bring Eidolons back in on the play, right? And Boros Charms and stuff? Like... I definitely want to keep Searing Bloods. What else did I bring in? I brought in Ash Zealots. Okay. I think that Ash Zealots can become Eidolons on the play. Um, we, can cut, we can cut the light of the stages because they're filler. And I probably want Deflecting Palms just in case any shenanigans happen. I probably want to Want to chain to the rocks. You like to play first? Yes. Luris, companion, go. Oh man, please. Please. Hmm, I might have to keep this one. Worked out last time. Alright, oh no. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, Lava Runner. Not your time. So is their only thing to hit uh, Ingrass Marauders? Is that all they have? Does anybody know their list? White? Oh, is it Bowman Courier? Red. Okay. Wild slash. Wild in the streets. Run in. Run in. Wild in the streets. Wild in the streets. Run in. Run in. Ooh, cliff top retreat. Legion. Why do you have Legion sitting in there? I'm far away from Luris. All right, I don't, I don't like this, but I'm going to wild slash that. Okay, I'm very far away from having lethal with what I currently have. This is going to be quite the uphill battle, and I have no way to kill a Wynota. At least if they play a Rabble or a War Boss here, I can kill it. Since they have eight of the oh, they don't have any? Yo. Good. Oh, they probably have like a raise the alarm or something here. Takes it. Okay, we're not doing too bad. We're not doing too Oh wait. I think I just got debated a million percent. They're gonna end a turn, make tokens with like secure the waste or raise the alarm and untap and Wynota. And they didn't, so we're good. I thought they were bluffing, but we're good. Yo, that is fine. I think we actually get lethal here. Yeah, I think that, yeah, this is exact as lethal. With Searing Blood. As it goes, Prowess, three to their face, they're at six, attack for six. All right, nice. We got there against Boros. Uh, Wynota. Uh, that was very, very interesting what they did. Uh, like, if Angrath Marauders is their only thing to hit, that seems a little inconsistent, but it worked out. 
It's a really cool deck. Wynota is awesome to see go off. It's a really explosive and fun card out of this new set. Got a game here against Battle the Rifle, um, who we played against a little bit here and there before on the channel. So this is going to be exciting. Hopefully they in the chat. All right, good. Just checking. All right. Luris is going to be our companion. We are on the play. Uh, this is... Do we have Light at the Stage? We do. Okay, I'm going to keep it because of Light at the Stage. They got Gigantha, the Wellspring as their companion so i don't know what this could be could literally be oh wait no 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 no! don't play gitu play the soul scar hmm gilded goose prizes isn't a yorion deck i'm okay with them taking that pain though Let's attack in with the Soul Scar Mage, see if they want to chump block. They are taking it. Okay, so I get the chance to light of the stage here and hit my second land. Hopefully, please, give me my second land here. No! On the bright side, I got those out of the way, so I'm not going to top that them for two turns in a row. Thank you for playing the Odyssey Plains, because that one's sweet. If it didn't have the lightning bolts in the back, it would not be nearly as good. The lightning cloud. I sent a signed one of these to a patron. It was probably the nicest thing I've ever sent out to a patron before. Okay, Kaya's gonna exile stuff. No, I'm getting land screwed. Don't let it end this way. Oh, it's five color Niv. It's for sure five color Niv, isn't it? I think this is five color Niv. Oh, wait, Wasteland Strangler. Okay, probably just Abzan mid range. Oh, yeah, I'm 100%, 100% screwed. I'm going to scoop this one, actually. i I very far gone here. They're going to have Siege Rhinos, they're going to have stuff like that, but somehow they're still not a Yorion deck. Um, all right, well, what do I want against this? Maybe Chain to the Rocks? Maybe I just leave it the same? Deflecting Palm? Searing Blood kills their Mana Dorks and their, their stuff? I kind of want a couple Searing Bloods. At least a couple. You know what, maybe I want a couple chain to the- okay, too late. Hugs! Ashy, baby! I hope you're having a nice day. Would you like to play first? Yes, I would. On... Give me the good opener. Oh no. Don't let it end this way. Mulligan. Okay, that one looks a lot better. Um, let's throw away a wild slash. Or you know what? I actually should have bought him like U2 Lava Runner. Because I'd rather play Eidolon on turn two. Yeah, that, that was a mistake. Because I was thinking in my head I was going to go Soulscar Mage into Soulscar Gitu and then do other stuff. Um, but now that I think about it, I would want to play Eidolon in the next turn. So it'd be better to just go second Soulscar and then Wild Slash a blocker. So that was a mistake. Shock in for Death Ray Shaman. Alright, that's interesting. You don't really see Death Ray Shaman too often, but... They are a deck that's trying to ingest with Wasteland Strangler. So I could see that. Probably a Thought Seize and Push deck. Takes it.
Gigantha is the f easiest free roll companion there is. Yeah, like people, like there's some decks that can literally just toss Gigantha in and they're not. There's the push I was talking about. They want to put that in my graveyard so they can exile it and gain two life. Go to combat, get in there. And Deathright Shaman stops Luris, so it's like good right now against Luris decks. Um, well. Wizards lighting their face, I guess. They're gonna eat my Eidolon, gain two life, and I eat their Luris, or I eat their, their Deathright Shaman. So I can't get that back with uh with Luris anymore. They eat. So if they have Wasteland Strangler here, okay, good. About to say they're probably gonna gain two life. Have a good blocker. Scry two. Another Wizard's Lightning? Well, I probably want to throw that at the Charming Prince and then just get in. You know, that was actually kind of dumb. I should have just went swinging, and if they wanted a block, then I would just eat the Charming Prince. We've been streaming a while, I'm getting tired and miss playing. Come on, no Strangler, no Strangler. Strangler would be the worst for us right now. That or like Knight of Autumn gain four life. Gilded Goose. The Goose that keeps on gilding. Barring Vantage. Well, I guess this is a turn where I'm gonna get out Luris. They can crack that food, gain three life. All they want. They probably don't want to, and they're just going to slam a Siege Rhino in my face. You ever had a Rhino sit on your face? It hurts. That's what kicked me out of standard. Alright, play Luris. They're down to three, virtual six, if they crack their food. I'm expecting them not to and just play a rhino. Yup. Yup, rhino. I have no doubt in my mind this is a rhino. I would bet two dollars on it. Never mind, maybe it's not. But if they crack their food, it definitely is. Okay, it could be Soren. Soren, uh, the the four drop Soren. It's right. I told you. I told you. You owe me two dollars. All right. Any burn spells lethal. Any any spell. Boros Tram will do it. All right. Get in there. This matchup is hard, especially on the draw. It's going to be difficult because they got rhinos and stuff. So being on the draw, losing the die roll really hurt this match and is very terrifying. But we're going to game three. We have a shot. Um, but now I can side in some of the chain to the rocks I wanted. I'm going to side in at least a couple. Let's cut a couple more light up the stages. That seems fine. Let's do it.
tired. So tired. Ooh, that's good. I actually don't have a mountain for Chain of the Rocks, but it's uh, got things to do. Come on, shock. Hello. Oh, oh, you see what just happened? They mulligan to five. Oh, we have a shot. All right, Soul Scar. Hog. And they're stuck on black white. They don't have green mana. Yeah, Charming Prince is okay. Ooh, Searing Blood. All right, play a Swift Spear. And go to combat and swing. And if they want to block, I just shock their face. All right, wheat. Oh, they're still on black white. I'm sorry, but they just need one more green for Siege Rhino. Yo, what's up, Permafrost Bite? How are you doing today? Cabal's pretty good. Oh, I got my mountain though. I got my mountain. Let's go with um, Chain to the Rocks. Sure, that drains us. Deal with the Kambal. Play Vishino Pyromancer. Deal two to their face. Go to combat and swing for four. Down to 12. Got a Mountain Dew. Did you make it out of the Mole Hill? Um, are you talking about in Super Mario? If it's on Super Mario, then yes. Trying to. No Charming Prince, that is fine because I can just play a Swifty and Searing Blaze it. Searing Blood it. Get Triple Prowess, hit you for three, and this might be lethal. Oh no, they're at one. All right, opponent, you need a top deck of basic force for that Rhino, and even then, we still got it. Hi, Ben PX. Thank you so much well, for. Oh, playing. I had to leave for dinner. Oh, it's D Carmona, gifting a tier one sub. Oh, I it didn't pop up in my notifications. It didn't pop up, but thank you so much, D Carmona, for the four months in a row. Welcome back to the marination. Enjoy the emotes. Thank you for your generosity. Yeah, we're still going. We're gonna go a little bit longer. And boom, explosion. Y'all's rooster. GG. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the videos, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So again, as the speed ups have been going lately, I'm doing this very late at night. It is almost four in the morning, so I'm going to be a little bit more quiet. Now, I did stream this, I think, like three days ago, so I might not remember these matchups totally, but I will try to commentate them as they go along. And um, I think we're going to be speeding up, I believe, the next six rounds today, if not five. 
And so let's just jump right into it. I always like to put the longest one first so I can get the introductions out of the way. Now, I don't think there was any matches today that were cut from the, the entire video. So uh, going down to the Twitch link down below will not reveal any hidden games that weren't in the video for today. However, just go into the Twitch link anyways. If you want to go hang out at a stream, go hit that follow button. Very much appreciated. Uh, so this first matchup, we are going up against Green White Tokens. Now, Green White Tokens is a thing. It was a thing in Standard at its time when you could have Nissa voices in a car and Gideon allies in a car at the same time, which in my opinion is a very, very strong synergy. It's a very powerful one-two punch, turn three, turn four. And this deck obviously has Llanowar Elves and Elvish Mystics, so it can do it a turn earlier. Now, um, I can't believe that people don't play this in Pioneer that often because it feels really powerful. And I honestly thought it was going to be an awful, awful matchup because they can produce so much blockers and have a lot of things that have lifelink. They can gain so much life with the, the tokens they make off of Legion's Landing and they can even pump them and they can even make tokens off of March of the Multitudes, Amara. They have so many ways to make lifelinking tokens that I felt like this was going to be awful. But we do get to be on the play in game three. And being on the play, it's it's uh, it was still a little bit difficult because this Brimaz was a problem. But I decided to swing into it and trade off Searing Blood plus a Swiss Spear to get in at it. And we had enough burn in hand to just throw at their face, dome them, and get lethal. It did take a little bit because I did gain a little bit of life with Night of Autumn. Um, but I was able to still find lethal anyways. The Wizard's Lightning off the top, and that will do it. So we take down green white tokens, a really cool deck from the opponent, and I wish to see more of that in Pioneer. So we're going on to the next game. And speaking of green and white decks, we are going up against another green white deck. So you see the all, um, is it in soul deck on your screen, but it's not, is it? It is Bant. It, it is using green and white because it has, um, I believe the white is for Luris, and I don't know if the white was for anything else, so they could have been like soul tie even, or not soul tie, um, yeah, soul tie because they had the green for hardened scales as you can see they had hanger back walker they had steel overseer so they were trying to just go with the hardened scale synergy i didn't think that that fit very well for um is it in soul i think that it's better as is it because shrapnel blast is a lot more aggressive and also bowmat courier is really good and so i think you get a lot more out of just being low to the ground consistent and having like skilled animator and just going green uh Blue red. Um, I don't think the hardened skills is worth it despite how powerful Steel Overseer can be. Although I always thought that the Insole deck should try out uh, Steel Overseer since it runs a lot of artifact creatures and even some of them are um, evasive. Like Hope of Gearper, Ninja Brute can even be evasive. Uh, but the fact that they're running those slow things that like you know Steel Overseer 70 sickness I have a chance to kill that before it can do anything. And the hardened skills is uh, pretty much a do-nothing card if you have nothing on board. And uh, I kind of misplayed around the Hangaback Walker a bit, but we're still able to get there. It took a little while from this point, so that's kind of spoilers. Um, but they had the Luris and stuff that can gain them life, so I was like, wait a second. I forgot about Luris. Maybe I made a mistake. But fortunately, I'm able to go wide enough to where it didn't matter. And I ended up top decking removal spells off the top anyways. That deflecting palm wasn't doing a whole lot, but I brought it in just in case it hit us with an insoul artifact creature. Anyways, we take that one down and we go on to the next game. Continuing this streak of green decks, we were going on to Sultai Yorion. Now, I did want to get a Yorion matchup today because this deck was doing very good. And I know that Yorion decks are the best decks. Like, Yorion is insane. And uh, it's been 5 0 Like, many different kinds of Yorion decks have been 5 0 leagues. And a lot of them have been very different from the others. So, no matter what kind of way you build Yorion, it's going to be pretty dang good and pretty dang powerful. Yorion is just free ETH card and just gives you so much value. And this matchup was going to be very difficult because they had, you know, Siege Rhinos to gain life. They had the food tokens off the Gilded Goose to gain life. And obviously as a burn deck, it's a little bit difficult to fight through all of that. But we're trying our best and we're just trying to uh, accumulate enough burn in hand to get there. And we do have plenty, plenty, plenty of damage in hand. All I have to do is just, uh, I don't have enough mana. That's the problem. I, I would have beat them a long time ago if I had the mana to throw multiple spells in a single turn. But we have to take the slow route. But the opponent is not really in a position to swing because we do have creatures on board and their life total is threatened. So all we have to do is just sit back, 
Hope they don't draw any more life gain, and we're good to go. And going on to the next game, it kind of ends up going the same way. We got a really aggressive start. We got the Eidolon, and I believe the opponent was struggling on colors because they were stuck on blue-green. So they couldn't really get the colors for, like, Seed Rhino and stuff. But they did get the... The Thassa was a little bit scary, you know, and that stuff. And they were able to even blink a goose, if I remember correctly. But I have a lot of spells to get. I got the light of the stage going for a free Eidolon, free land drop, and then I'm able to start shocking off their stuff with Searing Blood and just getting super aggressive and getting there with Boron Charm. And we take down the Yorion deck, which is really cool. I really wanted to take down a Yorion deck today. So Luris comes up on top. So now we're moving on to the next game. And this was actually, I believe it was the first game in the entire stream. Uh, this was against, is it uh, Thing in the Ice? Just Blue Red Thing in the Ice? It was like Control. But I think it also had uh, Fevered Visions, just like we went up against the Fevered Visions deck earlier in the video. And so they were just, you know, controlling, trying to flip a thing in the ice, but that's kind of slow. And they didn't really have uh, hard counter spells. They might have had Azuria's Charm in there somewhere. And they had that Chandra Acolyte of Flame to start recurring things like Shock. And recurring something like Shock is good, you know, kills our creatures, but those creatures we can just straight up get back with Luris. They did deal with our Luris, but. They're not really doing a whole lot to deal with us, so that just gives us all the time in the world top deck burn spells. And when they flip their thing in the ice, they bounce my Vyashino Pyromancer, realizing, wait a minute, I'm at one life. They scoop it up, realizing I'm just going to replay that Vyashino Pyromancer, dome them for lethal damage. And so we go on to the next game, and they get to be on the play this time, but they don't really commit to the board, allowing us the chance to do so. And we have quad Wild Slash, so they're already at a virtual eight. And this is where we find out that they are a Fever Visions deck. I don't mind at all, just like earlier in the video. Fever Visions actually helps us a lot. Giving us more burn spells makes you deader. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, the Chain of the Rocks didn't even need to use it. We just got there with Burn to the Face. So we're going on to the next game. And this is against Jeskai Control. Or no, not Jeskai Control. It's against Jeskai Mutate. And that's very interesting. We saw the Polyog Symbiote. And we saw Vadrock. And I even almost misplayed at a certain point around their Vadrog. And, you know, some stuff they had, and they got a little bit of lucky draws and whatnot. But it was really interesting to see uh, uh, Jeskai mutate. If anything, if I saw a mutate deck, if, like, outside of standard, I don't even, I don't pay attention to standard, so I don't know if they play mutate in standard. But uh, I would expect it to be Teamer for Aluna, or, like, Soul Tie, you know, with, like, Brokos. I did not expect to see this guy, but I guess it was for Vadrop, and it was a really cool brew. I really commend my opponent uh, for playing it. Props to them for brewing a super cool deck. And uh, they flame sweeped our board, and I didn't see that coming. I thought it was going to be something like Devon and Clarion, and I went all in at it, didn't realize that they were going to have flame sweep, but I guess it makes total sense because their Polywog symbiote dodges flame sweep because it's a 1 3. Now, this Lord Dracus was pretty obnoxious. They kept, like, Top decking good things like they were in top deck mode and they top deck Vadrock the turn I was like uh I forget what it was but there was something I did where I was like I didn't expect them to top deck Vadrock but uh yeah we still got there anyways we got enough burn spells and take down Jeskai Mutate but I really hope that the opponent does well with that deck because it's really cool I want to see that 5-0 so now we're going on to the final game of the video and you know what I like to do I like to save the best for last whenever we're on a deck that's on a rampage you can see how it all comes to an end. And uh, we could have went going, we could have been going with this deck all day. It was on a roll. Uh, if I kept on going and going and going, if I had all the time in the world, we could have ended up like 50 and 3. Like it, it was doing pretty good as my Discord notifications go off. Don't worry, that's not your Discord. Um, but yeah, we did so good today. We did so good. But I want to tell you, the way that it all came to an end, it wasn't as, it, I mean, I guess you can call it fair and square as my Discord beeps again. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the, the recording's going to end soon in a second. But it all comes to an end from a crucial misplay. It was a misplay that as soon as I did it, I was questioning myself. Like, why did I do that? That was not the correct play. And it costed us the round. You know, if I didn't make that misplay, it would have been undefeated. And it would have been awesome. But, you know, it happens. Misplays happen. Um, now this, like I said, I did stream this three days ago, so I might not remember what the misplay exactly was. I will probably try to remember as I'm commentating, but it was on game number three. So we're going on to game number three. Oh yeah, I remember exactly what it was. 
They had a creature that I casted searing blood on, and I had no reason. Yeah, it was the Yarg Sven Lurker. I had no reason to use the searing blood when I did. And as soon as I did it, I was questioning myself, like, why did I do that right there? I didn't have to do it. I could have waited. There was no reason to do it right there. And then something, for some reason, if I didn't use that searing blood, I forget what it is. It'll happen in a second on your screen right now. The Blessed Alliance. There it was. Because I was like, I needed to hold up Skullcrack. I should have held up Skullcrack. They have life gain potential. That's why I brought it in. I had no reason to searing blood a 1-1. I could have held up Skullcrack, prevented the um, Blessed Alliance from gaining four life, and I would have had lethal, lethal damage. So, you know, misplays happen, and that's how it came to an end. Anyways, let's go on to the wrap-up. Hope you enjoyed. So we ended up with 10 total wins, and I could have kept going. We got those 10 wins so quick, but I also wanted to do a draft for Saturday's content, so I decided to stop, you know, going with Burn. If I kept going, who knows how many we could have gotten. I could have went all day. Um, and our... One loss was actually to a misplay. I, I'm sure I will have commentated it in the speed up session. I'm sure I would have. But it was an actual misplay that got us our one loss. If I didn't screw up like a dummy, uh, we would have been undefeated, which would have been amazing. So Boros Lurus Burn is legit. It was consistent. 19 lands worked out. That honestly seems like I usually go 20 for Burn. Um, sometimes 19 works, especially since we don't have fetches because it's not modern. So it works, and uh, you know, I actually gained a newfound respect for Light Up the Stage. I previously, I still kind of don't like spectacle cards. Light Up the Stage, however, is fine. I like how it helped us hit our land drops, because if we had like a, a hand that it was like one lander, but we had a one drop to play, we hit him with it, Light Up the Stage, and then we get our next land drop and continue to keep doing things. And it also, I like how in some scenarios, it makes your next turn really explosive. And that's pretty cool. Although sometimes it's a, it backfires because sometimes you don't have a way to proc it. Sometimes they have blockers in the way so you can't get spectacle. Um, you know, sometimes you don't have enough mana to cast those cards that you get off of it, you know. And that kind of sucks sometimes, but you can, if you can at least get one thing off of it, it did its job. It got you at least a prowess trigger. So there is that. And uh, I really have no complaints at all with any of the build of this. It, it was all pretty tuned to perfection in my opinion. And so if you're going to build this deck, I, I recommend building it exactly like this. There was no problems whatsoever. The sideboard could use a little bit of changes. It's up to you. I love Chain to the Rocks and Searing Blood, though. Deflecting Palm may be clutch for those monogreen stompy matchups. Ash Zealot was clutch against um, Lotus Breach because it stops them from Underworld Breaching. And uh, Skull Crack really didn't come in handy. Thought it would, but it really didn't. Um, so you can definitely mess with the sideboard if you want, but it worked out. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button down below if you did, and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below. Go follow the social media. Links are down below. And if you wanted to try today's deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders. The link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online, as well as any future decks we play on the channel. If you want to pick up today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. Thanks to the sponsors, patrons, and Twitch chat. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.